did six Clarks, three Coachers, two Melroses, Killer Kaminsky, and then we threw a couple of farmers in there that were just great pitchers. The Hawkeyes, the toughest team ever to play any sport. <laughs> I had someone say one time when they looked at our ball team picture, they go, gee, that looks, doesn't look like a ball team, it looks more like a work release program. <laughs> On the plains of East Central Saskatchewan, there are two workaday towns just down the road from each other that are home to fields of canola and wheat. And more penalty minutes per square mile than any place in the world. Oh, my God. Somebody's cut, boy. A lot of blood on the ice down there. This is by far the toughest place in, in Canada. Much bigger than Chase. It was competitiveness, but it was pride. Like, even if you got the short end of it, you better come back out and make sure everybody knows that it's not happening again. Like the distance runners who emerged from the Great Rift Valley of Kenya, four decades ago, the hamlets of Kelvington and the mellifluously named Porcupine Plain produced Barry Melrose, Kelly Chase, Joey Koser and Wendell Clark. Down goes Mackey. Clark places him. The trainer is on the ice, and Dave Mackey is out. What about this area of Saskatchewan breeds toughness? Really, work and toughness was just part of the way of life. It wasn't something that you thought about doing. That was just what it was. Can you teach Kelvington character? Most mothers wouldn't let you be Kelvington tough, I think, anymore. There's no other town like this. Who is the toughest of all you guys? Joey. Whoa! He throws his entire body into it like a fighter does. Just the straight power. The power he had coming out at the end of his hand was as much power that I've ever seen come out of anybody. Including Bob Proby. Including Proby. And a lot of people fought Proby so they didn't have to fight Joey. That tough. Prober might beat you, make you look bad, but he didn't hurt you, hurt you. I'd rather rub a Cougar's rear end with sandpaper than fight Joey Coaster. Somebody asked me what, do, what did I aim for when I was throwing a punch, and I told them the back of the head. And they asked me, why would you want to hit the back of the head? I said, I want to go through the front to get to the back. Coaster with that right, and the jackhammer knocks him down. All four grew up on farms, where hard work was as natural as a rooster's crow. They had to work here. The kids had their chores. I got cattle. They have to feed the cattle. They have to do farm-related stuff. You know, that's what we had to do when we were kids, and this is what we tried to have them do also. Their parents set the example on the farm and on the rink where Wendell's father, Les, was an imposing figure on the Kelvington Wheat King's blue line. I idolized Les Clark. All I wanted to do was be good enough to play in the senior team with Les Clark. I thought he was the greatest defenseman ever. And he was tough. Les was tough. He was scary. Boy, Les yelled, the, the rink emptied, like, in minutes. Every small town had a senior team that was dead serious. Uh, that's what people went to. That's, you know, the town rinks were sold out at 1,000 people a game. Uh, to watch a senior game on a Wednesday night in Kelvington. or a... These are hard men. These are guys that were working, but come and when they went to play hockey, they played for serious. It wasn't rec hockey. There was no rec hockey. There was no slow pitch. It was you play it or you don't play it. Our parents demanded that you play hard. Did they and... demand that you play rough? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Whenever we hear a story about, you know, a, a parent uh, abusing a, a, a player on the ice and stuff, my son turns to me and, would Granddad have done that? <laughs> I said, yeah, he'd have done that. They're going to let him go. Generally, an unwritten code governs hockey fighters. The Kelvington crew had an addendum. And he had 46 fights. He never fought anybody from this area. Joe Koser had more than 200. Never fought anybody from this area. Wendell never fought anybody from this area. I never knew that. I never knew that, uh, that you'd think by mistake somebody would have punched someone in the face. but. Why weren't you going to fight each other? Well, we're both from Calvington, so you, you just don't do that. It's against the rules. 
The armistice even extended to the playoffs. During the 1987 Norris Division Final, with Toronto leading Detroit three games to one, Clark declined to fight Koser, despite his father's badger. Les would sit at my table and say, Wendell, you have to fight Joey. You, you have to, or else you're not going to win. Well, Jacques Demers was a coach, and Jacques heard someplace that Joey and Wendell were cousins, and they would never fight. So he put Joey on Wendell, and Detroit won the next three games. Coaster, Clark, Melrose, Chase. 569 NHL fights, not one against another. Why wouldn't you fight each other? Uh, probably because we knew we weren't going to intimidate each other. We're all from the same area. He's got a teammate I can fight. I don't have to fight a buddy. We grew up together playing hockey. We spent summers together playing softball and just uh, too much respect for him. Jason, <laughs> who's arresting you in this picture? Call it love, respect, camaraderie. They were family in the most inclusive sense. Every summer, the boys would return, working at Barry Melrose's hockey school during the week and barnstorming with the ball club on weekends. A lot of wins in here. The four of them, with their brothers and cousins. And Kevin Killer Kaminsky, who would drive up a couple of hours from Churchbridge. Can you imagine Connor McDavid telling the Oilers, hey, I'm gonna go play ball this summer. I can, it would have just been like, are you out of your mind, kid? Never mind telling our coaches, hey, we're gonna play in this summer fastball league. What for? About uh, 300 bucks a weekend, total. Everybody knew who we are, what we are doing, knew we were good, knew how hard we played. They saw us come in, all big, physical, totally intimidated, totally intimidated. Was this the toughest fastball team alive? Oh, it's definitely the toughest in, in Saskatchewan. <laughs> well, that makes it the <laughs> toughest team alive. There was a, a collision at home plate. Barry just crushed the guy, run him over. And everyone charges in kind of, and I start to trot in, and Neil yells over me, hey, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. He goes, you don't need to go in there. <laughs> I mean, what are you, like, in other words, what are you going to do in there? Wendell, Joey, Don, Barry. Oh, who else, killer, whoever. What are you going in there for? So we just walked over to second base and we just kind of sat down on second base. We enjoyed winning and we weren't scared to get in the way if someone was running in the base paths. There could be a shoulder drop down. So we, we played ball like we played hockey and we stood up for each other a lot more than any other teams would because we're all together, we're all family. 